At the top of a skyscraper, Ringo cries finding she's passed her college entrance exam, when a mysterious man pushes her down and she's informed of having a short life before perishing. In the present, she's reincarnated as Rayliana McMillan in a novel, wondering why she's still alive after the incident in her past life. Rayliana cannot remember who pushed her down and what they talked about, and she's still adjusting to her new life as a beautiful noblewoman. Downstairs, she greets her father, John Dean, and her younger sister, Rosemary, hugs her, receiving a scolding from their mother, Katie, for walking around during mealtimes. Reliana observes that their family is happy and well-off, just like in the fairy tale where Joan Dean is a rich aristocrat with a successful oil business, earning the Baron title. However, Reliana is only a side character in the novel who's destined to pass away for the protagonist to return home from her studies due to the passing of a friend. Refusing to perish twice, Reliana observes the story's events where her fiancé Francis Brooks will mix poison into her tea every night until she passes from arsenic poisoning, then he'll urge her parents into lending him their business. Lastly, the protagonist will expose the truth behind the incident. As she and Francis walk around the garden, she claims they should break up as she plans to make him stop their engagement to avoid passing. Finding that Francis won't listen, Rayliana follows tips on how to ruin a relationship from a book, however, her attempts fail. The next morning, Francis visits her despite having no arrangement to meet, and when she tells him to leave as she's not in love with him, he's angered into claiming they should be grateful to attain the Brooks family title. Additionally, she cannot escape the marriage before leaving. That night during a noble party, Rayliana feels frustrated because of Francis and refuses to continue living like this, so she plans to seduce Noah Wingknight, the country's duke and the novel's male protagonist, as he can stop Brooks' ill intentions having a higher rank. While she follows him alone, Jake Langston informs Francis of the situation, threatening his life if he fails to marry Rayliana. Angered by Rayliana's sudden change of behavior towards him, Francis looks for her while she introduces herself to Noah, being aware of his hidden evilness. She proposes that they make a deal regarding the sovereign seal, but before the details can be disclosed, Francis suddenly finds her, making her feign having an affair with Noah. Whispering their deal, Noah plays along and halts Francis' anger as Raleana leaves with the servant to go home. Afterward, Francis criticizes Noah for power tripping before leaving and Noah orders his butler to investigate Raleana and prevent Francis from taking action. He wonders about their deal. Meanwhile, Joan Dane offers Raleana his coat, worrying about her sudden weakness in their carriage. At home, Noel claims he ran into a puppy, thus his late return. The morning after, Raleana wakes hungover when Noel suddenly visits. To maintain her facade and aid her plan, she needs to hide her weakness and assist him in stopping her engagement. Noel arrives bearing flowers, catching the attention of the maids who gossip about their relationship. Afterward, Raleana indulges in ice cream to soothe her hangover, and her maid Elma inquires about Noel's visit so she fabricates a story about their encounter at the party, feigning commonalities between them. That night, Raeliana's parents inquire about her relationship with the Duke, so she confesses her desire to break off her engagement with Francis, as she wishes to marry the man she loves, Noel. Surprisingly, her parents agree, citing her obedience and happiness as their priority, which leaves Raeliana guilty of deceiving them, knowing she's not truly their daughter inside. The next day at Noah's mansion, Raeliana confronts him about the missing sovereign seal, suggesting he possesses it due to his status as the noble leader. Noah dismisses her, but she insists it's in their family's graveyard, gaining a reaction. As he persists, Raeliana prepares to leave calmly, hoping he'll stop her. However, upon reflecting on the kingdom's precarious situation, she proposes a strategic move in their conversation, advising him to align with the Gale family by making their heir, Harrelson, his ally. With Valder's dangerous engagements, she argues it's the wisest choice for the kingdom's stability despite uncertainty, earning Noah's agreement to the deal. Later, Noah questions Raeliana's motive for needing him to pose as her fiancé. Unable to disclose the truth, she fabricates a story about a rumored assassination plot by Francis, prompting her desire to cancel their engagement. When pressed for her source, she claims they're deceased, preventing her from revealing their identity. Raeliana urges Noah to play along for six months, promising to vanish from his life afterward. Unexpectedly, he agrees, proposing she act as his fiancé in return during times of need. Regret quickly sets in for Raeliana as the Brooks family demands compensation for the one-sided breakup of their engagement. However, she's more concerned about her guardian and Noah's personal knight, Adam Taylor, as he's a martial arts prodigy who survived many battles before becoming a knight. Despite the maids interpreting Noah's actions as affection, Raeliana knows Adam will instantly eliminate her for suspicious behavior. Planning her move into Noah's mansion under the guise of bridal training, Raeliana secures Adam's continued escort, while Elma assumes ill intentions, earning a scolding from Raeliana. Upon apologizing, Elma hands the chocolates she previously requested. Outside, as Raeliana's attempts at conversation with Adam fail, Rosemary approaches, expressing support for her and Noah's marriage. 
Rosemary releases a balloon with a prayer, which gets snagged in a tree, and suddenly, Adam swiftly cuts the branch freeing the balloon. Rosemary thanks him with chocolate, prompting Raeliana to lend him all of her chocolates upon discovering his fondness for them. Eventually, the day of Raeliana's move arrives, and she bids farewell to her family. Raeliana is shocked by the grand carriage Noah sent, and later on, they arrive at his mansion where four butlers wait, and Gideon, the mansion's supervising butler, greets her. Before she's assisted to her room, Gideon shares the Wink Knight family's long history, leaving her ranting later in her room, unaware that Noah is listening. She's angered by his invasion of privacy, and he claims she cannot stay in her room right after moving as he mentions the Brooks family seeking compensation. Noah assures he'll handle them and mentions her bridal training will start tomorrow, stating he doesn't expect much, and Raeliana claims the same. She asks if anyone else is aware of their deal, to which he reveals Adam as one and hides the identity of the other. Noah agrees to respect her privacy, and upon agreeing to refer to each other informally, he urges her to say his name, making her fluster before leaving. Sneaking a peek through her door, Noah finds Raeliana punching her pillow in frustration, making him laugh and ask for Adam's opinion about her, which he unexpectedly positively claims is odd. The next day, Raeliana does her bridal training with ease, and after two weeks, she becomes bored afterward when Noah arrives with flowers, removing a fallen leaf from her hair. Annoyed at his presence, she's surprised by the bouquet only to get irritated again when he initially refuses to offer it. Noah mentions that people have been deeming her a perfect bride which she had no intention of, making her claim that she's only studying to improve herself as she cannot leave the mansion anyway. So he tells her to accompany him tonight at a ball where he plans to announce their engagement, shocking Raeliana about their engagement ceremony happening in a week that she wasn't aware of. Just then, a magician named Nick arrives to give her a makeover for the ball, leaving her overwhelmed. Later, Raeliana is shocked by his makeup skills as she looks like a doll, and he proceeds to dress her up and do her hair. Nick then reveals the two popular noble smiles, one of which is the smile only Noah can do which conveys ordinary people cannot speak to him, while the other is Vivian Shamels. He then teaches her a smile she'll become known for, claiming she should think of the person she hates most, Francis. Finally done, Raeliana greets Adam outside her room and is escorted to Noah's study. Meanwhile, Adam remains speechless by her beauty. She wonders if she looks strange upon seeing Noah's surprised expression, but he only walks past her, and they follow him outside. Gideon claims Noah is being bashful because of her beauty, which Raeliana doesn't believe as they enter the carriage and head to the ball. Meanwhile, Vivian enters her carriage to also attend the event. Inside the carriage, Raeliana asks Noah if he knows the two popular smiles in society, making him respond with his Noah winged night smile. When Raeliana and Noah arrive at the ball, Noah tells her not to disappear from his sight for longer than five minutes as they're accompanied by four more guards, much to her surprise. Inside, the nobles gossip about the two when Raeliana overhears noble women mention Vivian, while noblemen admire her beauty. She and Noah execute their smiles, and he refuses for her to dance with other men, earning the admiration of the women around them. Raeliana feels sorry for Beatrice, the protagonist who's destined to marry Noah, as she'll have to put up with his attitude. They then dance on the ballroom floor, creating a romantic scene in front of everyone, while Noah provokes Raeliana's annoyance, making her step on his foot purposely. So he ends their performance with a grand pose, teasing how she needs more practice. Afterward, Raeliana observes Nick's attitude is equal to everyone when she feels that someone is watching her. Suddenly, Vivian arrives, and Raeliana recognizes her name as her character likes Noah and will accept his proposal. However, she angrily sabotages Beatrice when she starts dating Noah. As the noble women greet Vivian, Raeliana realizes she may be targeted instead of Beatrice and tries to escape, but Noah wants her to act romantically toward him in front of Prize Eretiel, Marco's wife, who is part of the meeting of old nobility ladies. The members are known as only elite nobles' wives who are on good terms are invited, and they can influence their powerful husbands to change the country's politics. Noah instructs Raeliana to receive an invitation from Prize, uncaring of the possibility of her saying dangerous things at the meeting. Annoyed, she leaves to follow Prize, and Adam follows to guard her. Raeliana holds glasses of wine and purposely collides with Prize to stain her dress, catching her attention as she apologizes. However, before they can clean up, Vivian finds her and initiates a conversation. Raeliana claims they're in a rush to clean up, and Vivian mentions how Raeliana is an extraordinary scholar despite being in a lower class. Vivian is surprised when she expresses gratitude for the compliment, and Price feels the tension as Raeliana's calm words trigger Vivian's annoyance. Luckily, Nick notices Vivian and claims he didn't see her due to her lack of presence sparking an argument as he signals for Raeliana and Prize to leave. To wash their hands, Raeliana asks only Ansley, her lady knight, to accompany them, instructing Adam to inform Noah of the situation. Ansley is surprised that Adam followed an order from someone other than Noah and later on, Price confides in her family's financial problems with land. 
Raeliana empathizes, but Price feels down upon her mentioning Marquis. So she feigns envy for Price's interaction with other noblewomen and their meeting, becoming delighted when Price offers to invite her. However, before they return, Smoke suddenly engulfs them, and a mysterious man covers Raeliana's mouth with a cloth, causing her to lose consciousness and get taken away. Turns out, Francis is the one who planned the kidnapping. He can't accept how Raeliana rejected him as he was used to all women adoring him, including Jake's sister. However, his sister was willing to sacrifice her life just to win his heart, and his attempt to stop her failed. So Jake, knowing Francis isn't rich, orders him to marry and eliminate Raeliana, a rich woman. In the present, Raeliana jolts awakening to Jake as she recalls the events before the abduction. She's sure that it's Francis doing and becomes enraged, shouting for help as Jake threatens to hurt her. Raeliana apologizes to avoid scaring her face so he tells her to keep put. Later, Jake reveals that he's doing it to get revenge as Sophie, his little sister, passed because of Francis. Shocked, Raeliana claims Sophie wouldn't want him to commit crimes, making him laugh as he only cares about the money. Putting Francis as an example, Jake states that dumb nobles think they can do anything just because they have a position, and money is the most important thing. Raeliana gives up on convincing him when the carriage suddenly breaks down due to a landslide. So Jake plans to go into the woods while Francis confronts Raeliana who exposes his plan to eliminate her, plunging into him to escape into the woods. Later, she rips her dress to move easily and tells herself to be strong when Adam finds her and confronts Jake. Jake recognizes Adam and introduces himself to avoid getting assassinated, so Raeliana orders Adam to keep him hostage. However, he activates a potion that lures out monsters to escape, and as Adam defeats the monster, Raeliana falls down the cliff behind them. She reminisces about her past life's end until she lands in Noah's arms and is embraced. She worries for Adam's safety, but Noah's calm knowing he can handle the monsters as he returns. Adam confirms Jake has escaped while Ansley arrives with Jake whom they capture during his escape. Raeliana smiles at him, signaling he'll get assassinated, and Noah instructs the knights to scan the area for Francis. As she notices a pistol in his pocket, she snatches it upon the knight finding Francis and shoots towards him, causing him to fall in fear as she approaches. Francis begs for his life and Raeliana shoots the ground between his legs, leaving him unconscious from the shock. Raeliana smiles, feeling relieved since Francis will finally go to jail when she turns around to the others, stunned by her actions. Returning to the mansion, she's annoyed when Noah teases her that her weight is why their horse is so slow, but later on she blushes, thanking him for saving her. Raelina eventually falls asleep on his chest, and Noah wonders why he was so affected by her abduction, as it would be fine if the woman who took advantage of his weakness perished. The next morning, she wakes next to Noah shirtless in his bed. Raeliana asks whether they did anything inappropriate and Noah teases her, making her head out the door. She requests help from Adam while Noah orders him to return her to him, becoming stunned when Adam chooses to rescue her instead. Yadiv announces that Count Westernberg has arrived when Noah requests him to cancel it as Raeliana has been kidnapped by Adam. Meanwhile, Raeliana slouches outside after Adam saves her but only on the mansion's grounds, refusing to let her outside. She feels slightly guilty for her actions as Noah rescued her, so with Adam's help, she sneaks into the maid's bathroom to bathe. Afterward, he's surprised to see her in a maid's outfit. Gideon apologizes and explains the situation to Keith the Count, who's taken aback by Noah's care towards Raeliana as he waits for his return. While the cooks gossip about the incident, Raeliana sneaks in to get Adam food when they notice her, making her fame being a newly hired maid. She claims to be getting the princess food, so they give her strawberries with chocolate as the princess is fond of them. Upon returning to Adam, they enjoy the food outside, and Raeliana wishes she could have more alone time. So Adam brings her to Noah's private study where no one will look for her, but she's shocked to encounter Keith while reaching for a book. She's amazed by his attractiveness and he's shocked to discover that she can read the crypt language. As he invites her to join the academy, Noah spots them injuring Raeliana into calling him a pervert for taking advantage of her while she was asleep. He unexpectedly apologizes for deceiving Raeliana and kisses her hand, making her storm flustering while Keith can't believe what he just witnessed. He thought the rumor of them having a contractual relationship was true, but seeing Noah's affection towards her made him wonder otherwise. Later, Raeliana's parents visit the mansion worried about her safety and Noah assures them that he and the others will be confined at St. Bell Prison, the most secure in the country. He squeers to protect Raeliana her whole life, confirming that their ceremony will proceed tomorrow. The next day, Marie Wayne, owner of the best-dressed studio that every bride wishes to go to for their wedding gown, visits Raeliana to lend her the best dress she's tailored. Afterwards, she meets Noah outside and people congratulate their marriage during their journey. Raeliana realizes she'd taken Beatrice's place in the novel, and at night, Noel brings her to a boat to watch the fireworks. He noticed she'd been avoidant since before the ceremony, and knowing she'd leave him as her plan already succeeded, 
he begs for her to stay by his side. Noah reveals he's never loved anyone because he's the Duke, recalling a bad memory thus his avoidance of romance. Reliana assures he'll find someone soon, but before he can reach out to her, she's stunned to find a yellow-haired woman afar, Beatrice. The following morning, Price sends a letter to Reliana, inquiring about her well-being and extending an invitation to the noblewoman gathering. She eagerly anticipates their reunion at the annual monster hunt competition, held over three days in the secret mountains to deter monsters from entering the kingdom, with martially skilled nobles participating and presenting their catches to their respective ladies. Notably, Noah has never made such an offering. Reliana is confused about finding the letter she sent to Beatrice returned, and she worries that something important changed in the story since she survived. After embroidery training, she spots Noah asleep in his study and recalls how he'll first encounter Beatrice after a bad misunderstanding. Remembering how Noah will fall in love with Beatrice, she comes to her senses when he calls her name and teases her for watching his sleeping face. Reliana apologizes as he pinches her cheeks, then she storms to her room annoyed while Noah laughs, finding she's not so bad. The next day, Reliana is in disbelief about Gideon and the maid's assertion that people can freeze in the secret mountains despite being dressed warmly. Meanwhile, Vivian heads off to watch the competition. At the venue, Reliana finds women surrounding Noah offering handkerchiefs while Ansley approaches her, echoing the freezing warning. She then reveals her intent to compete, sharing an oath and cutting Reliana's dress for luck before departing. When Noah arrives, she mentions the freezing phrase, gives him chocolate, and presents a handkerchief she embroidered for Adam. Noah insists on receiving it, exchanging oaths with her before leaving. However, he's unaware that Reliana has given her true embroidered handkerchief to Adam. She then notices Vivian, Stephanie, and Christine, the trio who bullied Beatrice in the story. When the competition starts, Noah shows the handkerchief tied around his spear and Jasper, Lord of the Secret, claims he'll capture the most powerful monster someday. Later at the noblewoman meeting, Vivian suggests Reliana sit next to her, but despite her rejection, Christine and Stephanie drag her to the seat. Vivian hopes for everyone's safety while hunting, earning a compliment from Reliana as she asks where Prize is, however, it's revealed that she couldn't attend due to a cold. Vivian sarcastically mentions Noah's participating in the event, so Reliana plays along as they tease her for being low class. However, Vivian is shocked finding that he accepted Reliana's handkerchief, becoming angry when Reliana asks if she prefer to be loved by the one she loves over hundreds of men. Upon tasting her food, Stephanie and Christine claim she's eaten spoiled food and urge her to rest in her room. Later, the weather turns stormy and Keith states that it'd be more dangerous to hunt in the rain. Suddenly, the trio fiends accidentally spilling wine on her face, annoying her into claiming Stephanie's eyesight is bad before leaving to clean up. The first group eventually returns with a high-level monster dedicated to Vivian, while Ansley returns injured, worrying Reliana about Noah's safety. Ansley reveals Noah is in danger when they find an extremely large monster outside, and Reliana rushes out to find that Noah and Adam have returned. Noah offers her the monster they brought, promising he'll capture the dragon she wanted someday and the noblewomen are stunned. Jasper commends their capture of the Lord of the Secret Mountains and announces that Reliana will light the torch this year, leaving Vivian envious. The others gossip hearing she won a dragon and they show affection towards each other, with Reliana teasing Vivian as they head inside. Inside, Reliana angrily questions why Ansley was so injured and decides to give Adam a handkerchief without a dragon design. She's annoyed when Noah teases her about it, becoming flustered when he wants to change clothes. He recalls the time she peeped at him sleeping, making her cover his mouth and fall onto the bed as she defended herself, her ribbon falling off her hair as she hovered over him. Upon leaving, Reliana blushes about the incident as she's escorted back to her room. The escort states Ansley's recovering well while Jasper is celebrating the monster lord, and Reliana reveals how her request for a drive-in was a misunderstanding. Meanwhile, Keith overhears their conversation. Later, he visits Noah, surprised by his offer of a monster to a lady. Keith rambles about women's attitudes. Noah notices Keith is trying to imply something, so Keith asks if he's committed to Reliana due to his strange behavior. He plans to approach her, making Noah remind him of his place. Vivian is frustrated about Noah's rejection as she's lived her whole life being adorned by men and getting what she wants with ease. Her plan to light the torch this year to disrespect Noah and Reliana failed, leaving her to her last resort, a gem with evil intentions. The next morning, Ansley reveals that Vivian is returning to her mansion instead of going to the temple as only the woman who'd light the torch is obliged to. Reliana feels she went slightly overboard, meanwhile, Heeker, the highest-ranking member of the Order, argues with his assistant who tries to convince him to attend the event. Despite their argument lengthening, Heeker persists in staying home even if all he has to do is greet people. Outside, Noah anticipates his and Reliana's encounter at the temple for the torch ceremony, leaving the other noblewomen envious of their relationship. 
Vivian then wishes her luck before leaving, and she and Ansley proceed to prepare her luggage for departure. Raelia notices an unusual gem among her things, and Ansley lends her a letter from Wheaton. Meanwhile, as Vivian goes to the temple inside her carriage, she smiles at the thought that everything belongs to her. In the carriage, Raelia reads the letter and is confused to find that Beatrice is not enrolled in school as the novel said. Beatrice was supposed to return upon discovering her passing, leaving her worried about what would change in the future. On their way, Aureliana admires the scenery of birch trees planted by Heker after the natural disaster. Heker, revered as a living legend, resides in the temple they approach and inside Eugenia, a servant of God, greets and guides them around. Aureliana is directed to a purification chamber unaccompanied, discovering a splendid library, courtyard, and bathhouse for her thrice-daily purifications. In her quarters, she's repulsed by the unusual rice gruel meal she's obliged to consume. The next day, Raeliana, feeling nauseous from her rice gruel meals, wishes to escape as Heker observes her helping a fallen bird. He explains its fate is to perish upon entering the dome, becoming puzzled when she doesn't recognize him. Despite her efforts to release it, the bird's fate is sealed, triggering memories of her past life's passing. Raeliana criticizes Heker's focus on life and demise, angering him with her actions until he's left speechless when the bird flies again. Returning to her room, Raeliana wishes to avoid her meal, only to jolt upon finding Eugenia behind her. Meanwhile, Heker grows frustrated with Wade's inability to locate the priest he requested, aggravated by Wade's insistence that any priest should recognize him. As Raeliana undergoes purification, she frets over Noah's whereabouts, struggling due to his grand monster offering. Noah, meanwhile, plans a dragon hunt in the Healer Mountains with Adam. Eugenia expresses relief that Raeliana eats her meals despite complaining, contrasting with Vivian's refusal when Raeliana pleads to skip just one meal. So Eugenia allows her to transcribe the Bible instead, only to find she's already run away. At the library, Raeliana continues transcribing the manuscripts she finds whole way chases Heker, urging him to continue working. Heker heads to the library to continue his transcription when he finds that someone has continued his work perfectly, making him order Wade to find the person responsible so he can educate their talent. A butterfly is sent and lands on Raeliana, so Heker confronts her about the Bible translation which she confirms was her doing. She calls him rude for calling her a barbarian while he's stunned at her fluency in the god's language and announces she'll be his apprentice. Wade recognizes Raeliana and apologizes for Heker's actions, leaving her speechless about him being the living legend. Turns out he looks like that as his divine power is currently sealed. Raeliana is frustrated for not being informed about him as she formally introduces herself and kindly rejects his offer. Heker forgives her rudeness, but still, she declines, leaving him confused. The next morning, Heker pesters Wade, persisting to know why Raeliana declined, and orders him to open the Holy Land at once. Wade panics while Noah, Adam, and Raeliana notice the unusual commotion outside. A maid assumes they're preparing a banquet for the torch ceremony when she shows the jewel she found among her things, claiming it'd look lovely as a hairpin for her outfit. However, upon wearing it, Raeliana feels something off about it before leaving her room. Lady Baleen persists in becoming loved by Noah by purposely dropping her handkerchief near him and Keith. She runs away and Noah accidentally steps on it, however, he instructs Keith to apologize to her instead. This leaves Baleen annoyed. Watching Baleen attack Keith from afar, Noah shows Raeliana why he never touches someone else's belongings. He holds her hand and finds she's lost weight, making Raeliana recall the rice gruel meals. They find the holy knights who've come from the holy land, which turn out to be Heker's attempt to be recognized, but Raeliana is only seen frowning due to the light. Having been alone for more than 150 years, Heker struggles to be more friendly, claiming he'll be her grandpa as it's the only memory he has about family. Raeliana humbly refuses to while Wade drags him away and becomes defeated, realizing Heker cannot comprehend being more friendly. Noah and Keith arrive, noticing Raeliana trying to escape the situation when her hairpin almost explodes, worrying Noah. Heker uses his power to suppress the jewel and transforms it into his true form. Later, he explains to Noah that it's crystallite which explodes when exposed to light before asking about their relationship. Discovering Raeliana is his fiancée, he realizes he won't be able to train her talent and orders them to break up. Noah only offers financial support to their financially needy organization to save Raeliana, and Heker persists in being her grandfather, causing tension. Afterward, he instructs Adam to send their most talented knights to the Granger Castle. While Raeliana purifies, she recalls the jewel incident and fears eventual demise as she's only a side character in the novel. Still, she refuses to think negatively and hopes to find out who did it. The surroundings darken as she jolts to find Noah behind her, revealing that someone is trying to kill her despite Francis and Jake already being eliminated. He insists on knowing immediately, making Raeliana shove him into the bath and scold him for entering a chamber without permission. Recalling when Keith asked if he was committed, 
Noah wonders why he's so affected and apologizes. He reveals being fearful of losing her, leaving Raeliana confused. The next morning at the torch lighting, Raeliana refuses to think about Noah and Wade finds that Heeker likes her as he attended the ceremony compared to previous ones. Heeker persists in being her grandfather, making her feel guilty for the true Raeliana as she calls him grandpa before lighting the flame. Moments later, Heeker insists on accompanying her, earning a scolding from Wade since he cannot just walk where he pleases. Raeliana expresses gratitude to the head priest before returning home. Meanwhile, Justin, Vivian's elder brother, is flamed by his father for dating a woman he disapproves of. He then tells Justin to convince Vivian to visit the king often as she'll soon become queen. Justin rushes to Vivian upon hearing chaos, but he apologizes on seeing a guest who introduces herself as Beatrice. Raliana wonders who's trying to eliminate her when she flusters, finding herself dreaming about Noah. He returns from sword training after noticing her gaze towards him, and she feigns focusing on the swords. So Noah suggests doing something more fun and brings Raliana to a jewel store. Madame Grace offers newly brought jewels which Raliana adores, so Noah buys everything in the store and puts the necklace on her. She blushes at his compliment, and they enjoy their day with different activities outside. At the mansion, Noah leaves to fix an issue, and Raeliana admires her necklace in her room when Haley, a maid, thanks her for the time off. She also mentions never to look at the mirror in the West Building's back room. Haley believes his spirit resides within and will speak once eye contact is made, leaving Raeliana fearful. Later, she wonders about Beatrice's whereabouts as she enters the back room and finds the mirror. Glancing into it, Raeliana hears a faint voice only to drop the mirror when Noah appears behind. She claims to have seen a ghost, so no plans to bring a priest tomorrow, feigning he arrived because he forgot something when he was only worried about her. He accompanies Raeliana back to her room, who blushes when they hold hands until they return. She expresses gratitude and says goodnight, but Noah insists on staying with her until she falls asleep, so she suggests he rest on the bed while she stays on the care. Suddenly, he carries Raeliana back to the bed and lays beside her, making her flustered. Noah then reads her a novel, however, she's unable to sleep and talks to him about the novel's story. He criticizes its lack of realism despite being the protagonist in Raeliana's novel, and Raeliana eventually sleeps when he calls her a nuisance. Later, Noah's heart pounds watching her sleep, clinging to his arm. The next morning, Noah encounters Count Naomi in the hallway who's returned from a mission. He requests to see the king, Seatric, and inside, they find him unclothed with a woman in bed, and they argue about him being unable to hear Naomi's knock. Seatric heard that Noah had found the woman he loves whom she reveals to be Raeliana, and he greets Keith and Noah upon dressing. He finds that Adam is absent due to business before initiating a toast for tomorrow, and Noah says that there's no need to hide the royal seal anymore. He reveals that the horse responsible for Seatrich's accident consumed stimulants, and Count Bennett, who's trying to assassinate him, was the person behind it. Naomi agrees, and Seatrich asked about Raeliana, whom Noah tells the truth about. Later, Haley brings Raeliana tea and claims that the autumn rains have passed, making Raeliana recall the novel's event wherein the royal seal will resurface. She hurries out, leaving Haley confused as she rides a horse to the Wingknight family grave to find Beatrice, as the novel says. At the graveyard, Raeliana reflects on the story. Robert Wingknight died before inheriting the ducal title, so it passed to Noah, his mother's nephew, and the second prince. Noah buried the royal seal in Robert's grave, where Noah and Beatrice will first meet. In the present, Raeliana finds Beatrice. Meanwhile, Seatrich orders their engagement cancelled upon discovering their contract. However, Noel refuses, needing Raeliana for an important task as his fiancé. Stunned to find Justin instead of Beatrice, Raeliana grows confused, wondering if her survival altered the story. Justin lends his coat, explaining he visited a friend's grave only to find it gone. He invites Raeliana for a drink, but she accepts to calm down. Panic sets in when she learns Robert's grave, where the seal was buried, is missing. The graves were robbed and relocated under the Winged Knight's supervision, revealing the robbery as an excuse to move the royal seal's location. Despite just meeting, Raeliana feels a strange familiarity with Justin. He questions if she is seeking her boyfriend, and she reveals her forced engagement. Justin ponders why she arranged for her fiancé to meet another girl at the graveyard, suggesting their fate must have limits if they can't meet. He encourages her to live on her own terms, prompting her to realize she's shaping her own fate. Politely declining his offer to walk her home, Raeliana thanked him before departing. Later, Justin finds her fiancé lenient and realizes he never learned her name. As they depart, Seatrich instructs Noah to look after Raeliana and plans to meet her soon. Noah observes Seatrich's foresight, recalling a traumatic childhood incident while Raeliana returns to the maids who panic and call a doctor when she sneezes. Chaos ensues as she's tended to and Raeliana reluctantly accepts the altered story, disappointed that Beatrice hadn't visited the grave. 
Frustrated about replacing Beatrice in the story, she recalls Heeker's false claim that she'd be illness-free for a year. Noah questions why Raeliana was outside, and she pretends to have been playing rather than admitting her true motives regarding Beatrice. Flustered by his proximity, she explains her slight intoxication from Gideon's special cocktail for colds, leaving her unable to move. Suddenly, Noah carries her to her room, where she realizes the insignificance of their contract if the seal isn't in the grave. Wondering why he hasn't ended their engagement, she expresses her surprise at his kindness despite his usual mean demeanor. Confessing her confusion about her feelings for him, Rayliana falls asleep and Noah kisses her to transfer her fever to his body. The next morning, Rayliana is relieved to find that her fever has vanished. Reading the newspaper, she's grateful to be alive with the altered story, yet her safety remains uncertain as someone seeks her elimination and Beatrice's location remains unknown. Noah arrives to read the news and noticing his hesitation, Rayliana wonders if she was intoxicated last night. This makes him laugh as she leaves, rightly smiling at a flying bird.